Does that do an intro or you? Yeah. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Those Two Geeks. My name's Alex, his name's Joe. It is, um, I think, for the first time in a while, just the two of us today. Mm-hmm. Is it the yeah. first time in a while or is it one of those? I don't Didn't know. We do one in between the two I, Matthews. I honestly, I don't know. It, it, it's I. The thing is, I enjoy it all, so it doesn't. Honestly, mm-hmm. it's, it was just one of those things. I don't know if we. Anyway, um, as per normal with you and I, there is deliberately no topic. Although you had a, you had, yeah. you had thought of one. I think as we were getting ready to uh, to go. So, yeah, um, very loosely. Yeah. Yeah. So I before we before we get going. So I, I was at um. I think that was it last week. Yeah, last week because this week is Boston Comic Con, and you didn't you didn't go, so we weren't sure if we were going to record Saturday morning or. Yeah, no, Boston. I always I always decline Boston Comic Con ever since it switched ownership like four years ago. It's just oh, a okay. crap show. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. I I've never obviously never been, so I wasn't sure if it was one of those ones that you would you would go to just because it was local, or if it was no, just it's the, not uh, worth it. It's overpriced and it's like run by stormtroopers definitely not worth it like honestly so everything kind of misses even though it should be accurate um yeah, yeah no that's fair so i was at uh, it was east coast comic expo uh, it was in um, new brunswick and i i was there for a couple hours honestly i could have spent a bit more there had it not been for the fact that the air conditioning either wasn't working wasn't turned on or it's just the building was terribly oh jesus the building was not um not set up to have it, it you would think it would be a lot better because it's an ice rink yeah, but obviously. um sorry that oh jesus was because a crow just landed on the uh just outside the window and my cat froze and like oh god the window's open i don't need you to go through the screen for a bird that's bigger than you um yeah so it, i mean the, it was fun it was a one of those ones where there's a lot of stuff that I would have really enjoyed, but I think given that, that lately I haven't really been hunting comics the same way I used to because my X Men collection is complete. I haven't really started anything else, right. so I, I was walking like I don't need to dig through all of these long boxes. That's a strange, strange place for me to be in. Is that I didn't need to dig, so I was just right. wander, wandering around for a couple hours and then had a couple of sketch covers done and then then left but it was i mean it was 20 bucks to get in which was entirely reasonable for what they had on offer okay. um, you can't really argue the price given what was there and it technically is a two-day convention but day one is like 50 like three hours on a friday night so right it- so so it's like a preview night and then there's the full uh, yeah, day. yeah it's probably the best way to describe it yeah gotcha now, I was wondering, is it something like Jeff sent you to, or just no. on your own accord you decided? Yeah, to go? no, I just or J- Jeff was there, but it, he was there with the, with the uh, New Brunswick staff because they'll be there for for two days. So mm-hmm. I was just there of my own accord, wandering around, um, quite happily doing my own thing. Nice. Yeah. Um, I. What was the last convention I was at? I don't think I've been to one this year so far. I say. I feel like it was Rhode ah. Island. Was it not? That was the last one well, I was talking about. But that one Rhode that Island, this year. Rhode Island's always the big one. That would be in yeah. November. Yeah, I'm I think... trying to remember if there was anything at the beginning of the year I went with Steve. I don't I think feel... so. I don't know if you. Yeah, I don't know if you went to anything. Come, like, if if you did go to anything, it, it wasn't big enough that we bothered to bring it up on the show. Yeah, exactly. Um, maybe we talked about it here and there, or it was like a, a single day, like toy type. Uh, flea market thing no but... i don't think i've been to anything like that like my cousin is actually guesting at anime con in boston right now which is the same no it's not in boston it's in rhode island it's okay i was gonna say would they, would they have yeah. i was surprised that they were gonna have anime con and boston comic con on at the same time in the same city no, 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 it no, makes right. it makes sense if it's on them yeah no so i'm i'm hoping he does well because Believe it or not, like every time we go to the conventions, the anime crowd is always crowding Peter Griffin. For some uh, weird reason, there's like a prop. <laughs> and I can't that, figure it out. That's funny. So like he's I, hoping to like I, hit big. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. I hope he does. Oh, me too. But um, yeah, no, the next con I'm going to, I'm trying to think. There's one at the end of 
summer. I don't know the name, but I'm going to go to that. And I was going to go to um, Fanatics Fest, which is like the biggest guest list I've ever seen in my life. It's just like this whole sports and, um, you know, like convention uh, situation because like Tom Brady's going to be there. Peyton Manning's going to be oh, there. Oh, cool. But I just found out that Tom Brady's only going to speak so he's not doing like a meet and greet. Mm. So it's not worth it. Like that's the one thing I would have went if that's for. What, because, yeah, if that's what you wanted yeah. to go for. Yeah, so Fanat- like Fanatics once in a lifetime. Is, um, yeah. Oh, dude, it's huge. It's at the uh, the Javits Center where they do New York Comic Con in New York City. Like it's massive. I've never seen a guest list like this in my entire life. Like all the top tier WWE people, like everyone and all the top tier sports from past and present it's like nuts oh shit yeah you got the you got the manning brothers you got Henry yep. Quist. exactly exactly so it's like when would you ever get a chance to experience that but i started doing more digging into it because i got to go to new york city for it like you pay 56 bucks which is great yeah. because i won't get covered for press on this one but it's a crap show like the way it's set up i'm like no you'd be lucky if you get maybe two people that you want to get because it's going to be that kind of situation so it's like no there's just a ton of people yeah i can see you got rhea ripley hulk hogan cody yep. rhodes are there like yep. i think they put a- becky lynch and Liv morgan just got announced so maybe she replaced becky but becky was maybe be there. yeah, yeah. C- cm punk is there Yep, that was a big one. But I, you know, I met him years ago, multiple times before he made WWE. So I'm okay with that. I've never met Cody. Somehow in my travels, I've never crossed Cody, which is really weird because I've been through the Indies. I've been WWE when he was like a low Carter. Just it's never happened. I just, don't know. How. Just, just one of those things. Yeah. So yeah. I'm on a quest for him eventually. This but, may not. This may not be the place for you to to go but like there's a ton of there's a ton of wwe people there right like mm-hmm. oh yeah it's yeah. almost like a mini um what is it the wrestlemania like uh, wrestle festival. uh wrestlecon yeah it's very yeah. similar to that but you also combine all the the major sports stars of all yeah. time that are living it's just incredible like i mean the list is mind-boggling so I was like, yeah, I mean, yeah, what the hell? Tom Brady, Derek Jeter, yep. and Kevin yep. Durant, they're, but they're just doing panels, right? So I, I can yeah, see why, so like, that's if that's why you were going to go, that's like, yeah. Exactly. And, and the reason I wanted to go is because Tom Brady's not known for doing these ever. Like he doesn't do signings in person. When you get something signed by him, it goes to like an agent who, you know, third party ops you know, and verifies and authenticates it. But like, you can't be in the room with him. You still yeah, got to so pay the fee, but you he, you can't be there. He just doesn't do meet and greets. No, not at all. So I was like, oh, maybe he's breaking his rule. So to me, it doesn't matter what, you know, the charge would be. I'm like, it's a once in a lifetime. I'll do it. Yeah, you'll absolutely go. And then all of a sudden you realize, oh, wait, no, I can't. Yeah, or he, he's, he's not, he's not doing speaker. what you're expecting him to do yet. Exactly. So it's not worth it. I'm like, eh, maybe there'll be something down the road when like, you know, he's a little bit older. So yeah, I'm just like, whatever. Like you don't want to say a little bit less sought after, but there's going to be, I think, a time where if he doesn't go around a lot, then it's going to be a a case where he'll be. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he's going to be ever one of those athletes that's not very um vaunted in the public eye. yeah like he's always going to be extremely relevant somehow so it's going to be tricky but there might be a case you know somewhere down the road maybe they do like a nfl fan festival who knows I, you know, there's yeah. always a chance right so um before we switch to the topic it's really weird we don't have matthew on because clash at the castle is at two o'clock today i didn't even know that was on you didn't know <laughs> no, it's in the no UK. Jeez. I mean, yeah, I'm not in the UK though. It's I funny. Know, it's but... one of those. It's one of those things. I'm like, oh, is that I again? Like, so clued out of it all of a sudden that I'm just not. Um, I couldn't even tell you who's 
Who well, obviously, you know, Drew is going against Damian Priest. Yeah, and, and I, I would, I would assume that would be he, the main event. I would assume that would be Drew's moment in at home. I don't well, think as, so. As close to home, maybe. But. I definitely don't think so. I think it's going to be like another screw job on Drew, unfortunately. Which, which would actually be funnier. Because the word is like they are actually prepared for riots if the riots break out ringside. Hilarious. Because, you know, obviously the fans, the Scottish fans are going to be like rabid and crazy because they haven't had wrestling there in what, I think two years. And it's their guy. You know what I mean? So it's going to be interesting. I will say this though. It better be the main event. If they even dare put Cody and AJ as the main event, just because he's WWE champion, Mm -hmm. that's complete shit. Like this deserves what Rhea got in Perth. Agreed. It's the same thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And ideally, uh, we'll switch from wrestling. Ideally, I would love Drew to take it. As messy as it is, I would love him to take it. Feud with Punk. Because whether he has the title or doesn't have the title, the feud is built in. Mm-hmm. The only X factor is, unfortunately, Gunther winning the King of the Ring and already being earmarked for SummerSlam. So you only have two choices, and that's why I think they're going to screw Drew. Because you either build Gunther up with the King of the Ring to lose, which I don't think will be a great move, or you let him beat Drew within like a month and that's just dumb too so it's like the chase like cody you know what i mean maybe drew just has to wait a little bit longer yeah Punk and drew are gonna feud they're the money feud it doesn't matter where on the card that that is the money in wwe right now i mean you could it's what's getting people talking right because in, i don't think i haven't heard any anyone like in the circles i run it no one seems to give a shit about cody rhodes anymore now that his story is over it's Whether, just on it, it just it's like flat line unfortunately yeah. you know i love cody i absolutely love cody i love aj too but i don't give a crap like their match at um backlash incredible it might be the match of the year other than uh osprey and danielson which was mm. unbelievable but um I don't give a shit. Like the feud has no bite and they're doing an I quit match to blow it off, which those are usually big. The problem is they like completely aped one of the best promos of all time with Mark Henry. They had AJ Styles do like an impression and come out and fake retire, which just is like, oh my God, you have nothing else creative for these two guys. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just, unfortunately, it's a one-trick pony right now. Like, Drew is carrying, Punk is carrying, and the shenanigans with the Judgment Day. Like, that is the WWE right now. That's all and, the like, focal points. Drew and Punk aren't even in the um, in the ring at the moment, which is even even crazy yeah. to me. Yeah, and, and already, you know, Punk's already been spotted there. But yeah. you knew that was going to happen. So, I mean, you mean he's in Glasgow and he's not going to interfere? Like, I mean... But also, I don't want it telegraphed. Like, I would love to get a curveball that maybe Punk screws up and Drew becomes champ. Like, mm. I, I would be all for that, like 100%. You know what I mean? Yeah, that I, would I don't want to be... see, like, we know Punk's going to screw him. Like, it, you know, he's there. Smart money says, oh, he's going to cost him the title. Like, throw balls. Throw the title on Drew, even if it's for a month and a half. Just do it. Like, mm-hmm. get the moment, you know what I mean? But anyways, switching topics. The topic I wanted to talk about is, ironically, a topic we haven't talked about, like, a lot, is toys. And the it's only funny, I was I thinking, want... it was funny, oh, I was yeah. thinking, like, if we were going to do anything today, I, I, I would see it being toys just because we haven't in, yeah. in forever. Well, the only reason I'm inspired to do this is... Um, Target out of nowhere had like their fall geek out like drops for um, exclusives. Yeah. McFarlane and NECA always lead the charge on those. So McFarlane decided to drop like five drops unknown just yesterday. Boom. And 
he always keeps everything decent price. The one thing that blew my mind and I picked it up, he dropped the DC Direct Batman, the animated series Batmobile, like the full scale LEDs, everything. And he did it for $75 brand new. That's crazy. Which is nuts, right? So like Mm -hmm. my whole point is Todd is dropping, I mean, honestly, it's an old mold. So it did not cost too, but still. But still, yeah. $200 retail vehicle and dropping it for $75. So, I mean, it's just completely shitting on Hasbro with their prices. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And there's no excuse. You shouldn't have a Cobra Ferret, which is basically an ATV and a figure cost 89 bucks when Todd is dropping a fucking 26 inch Batmobile that goes for hundreds and hundreds on the market now. But when it was new it was $200 and he's dropping it for 75, no changes, LEDs, everything. The only change is the box and the box is a better box because he's doing it like the old Kenner batman the animated series so you're even making out more yeah like it's wild that's crazy here's the funny thing this is why i wanted to talk about it but then one of his two packs which are just two figures granted one's like an eight inch figure one of his two packs is seventy (laughs) dollars which makes no damn sense so like you drop the batmobile for 75 but you drop a two pack for 70 like, is what so what's the what's the two pack that's 75 it's um commissioner gordon in the um the robo bat bunny suit uh, which is mr bloom yeah exactly now mr bloom is new brand new but we've seen the robo bunny from multiple companies and honestly it's nothing special um uh, the mcfarland version like the dc direct one is still i think the best but the mcfarland one i mean decent but it's nothing special. So it's like, why is a two pack costing $5 under the Batmobile? Which Mm -hmm. I'm not complaining that the Batmobile was cheap. It's cheap. Yeah, but I mean, it's just crazy. Like there's no rhyme or reason to why these things are costing and what they're doing with um, with all the releases and whatnot. And I've actually heard a little birdie that is in my circles is saying that Hasbro is hurting really bad internally because oh, can, of so much shit. Yeah, I can, I can see it. It doesn't surprise me. Right. Well, I mean, the only thing I can think of is like, obviously they, they jettisoned Power Rangers. They got rid mm-hmm. of it because it was clearly dead weight. Um, Marvel Legends is like a bipolar ebb and flow. It, it, either it, rockets or it just tanks yeah know? it's crazy how it will go really well or mm-hmm. not at all and it's just neither like you can't judge that's the word i'm looking for you can't judge how it's looking at going no not at all so like i have a theory but everyone thinks i'm nuts there was an accidental hasbro page that went up like a month ago i think i told you this it, it went up and it it turned out to be just like a blank page, but it was HasLab. It mm-hmm. was the same page you would get for any HasLab, but it had no content. And for some weird reason, the, the text said variant, HasLab variant. So people backed it because it was a dollar to back it. So like 10,000 people backed it. They all like instantly, I backed it we all got refunded our dollar like two days later they were like oh we're sorry this wasn't supposed to go up it was a mistake whatever (laughs) my thinking is it was a beta test for and to use the word variant right yeah it was marvel has lab so it's probably a sentinel of some kind of gotta be right yeah that's what i said i said it's gotta be like an x-men 97 decode sentinel redone it has to be because that thing sold insane when it went out and so did Galactus, but you're not going to reissue Galactus. It would make sense with how hot the show is right now, 
to, to give redo them a the slam dunk. Yeah, yeah. Give them a slam dunk win. And since the mold is already there, if they were smart, instead of what three fifty nine, they could make it two ninety nine. Give people a little bit of a break and some different stuff. But you know, who knows? I just that's my theory because what else could it possibly be for a variant? Of yeah, anything? It, it makes no sense for it to be anything else other no. than other than that Has right like how could why would it be why would you do anything right and besides the, the java sale barge for has labs the ones that are making the most on the second market consistently are the sentinel and i think the sentinel was done at a time when people are, oh, i don't know if i want it there's a lot more hesitation to the sentinel at the time right right well, or is it, it wasn't a giant vehicle it crazy star wars collectors and vintage collectors because vintage collectors they're they're nuts right i mean yep. obviously look at the has lab that's going right now which is I, I i'm like why i can't believe that this is actually happening but like marvel that was their first one so people didn't know how it was going to go legends wasn't as hot at that point like they were just finding their footing now we know it was a slam dunk and mm -hmm. obviously galactus was even a bigger slam dunk but obviously they had a fail they had have they had only one fail i think they've only had one fail right marvel i think have only had the one fail star wars had two or three two, well i don't I, I would consider the uh, the vintage collection hasn't had a fail right um, but i think nope, the um that's correct. I think that the 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 black collection had the rancor fail, which again, like right. we've said that we've said before, it failed because of poor timing more than anything else, I think. Um, yeah, because of the Mandalorian finale. I don't I, I that's a big part of it, but like we've gone over, it failed because it was so disingenuous from the yeah. start. They like completely gave you scraps and was like oh you're so lucky to get this it's like no we're backing yeah. this we're not lucky shit like you yeah gotta make it worth um, our thing you know yes no you're absolutely right uh it was the the shit add-ons yeah um, like and, the, and, and the timing yeah yeah yep. i would say more the lack of well to me it was complete lack of um you know like creativity mm -hmm. in the in what you were getting for the um the unlockables like yeah and i think i think it's the same for the engine of vengeance it was the lack of yeah, yeah. lack I of the, the creativity in the um in the un additional unlockables that had no uh real bearing on what was going on and then obviously there was the reaver lightsaber that failed because i don't think people gave two shits about that um, right, right. Yeah, no en Engine of Vengeance barely made to 5,000 backers, so just over halfway. Um, the Reaver lightsaber didn't even make halfway. No, they, they got, like, if I remember, like, the Reaver lightsaber made, like, over 1,500, maybe Not something it, along those lines. Uh, so let me, hang on, let me open it up here. Uh, I don't think it was even that high. It was 1,413 to 5,000. Wow. So awful. Th yeah, that that that's where it ended. Like the thing about the Rancor, I actually think the Rancor got pretty close. Oh yeah, the Rancor was like Rancor is less than five hundred away. Yeah, yeah. And then when all the after vote, I mean after um sales were tallied, it only missed by like a couple hundred. At the yeah, very it was um eighty five eighty five thirty three out of nine thousand. So I I think that had it had your add-ons been a bit better had the um the had had they been aware of the rancor showing up in um right book of, book of boba fett right like eleven thousand backers for a gamorian guard well you can get those anywhere right yeah, like, like that was the big problem like you knew that they were just going to release the um the add-ons in the black series but like mm -hmm. slightly different and i've like, i've seen the gamorian guard add-on elsewhere already oh, yeah. um, but not on that same card but if you're opening the boxes anyway the cards don't it doesn't matter no. um 
the bones and backdrop were irrelevant. Um, well, they were cardboard. Yeah, well, the, the, I think the bones weren't, but the backdrop was cardboard, so ultimately irrelevant. Um, then you had um, the monkey lizard thing that I'm sure everyone really wanted. And Luke Skywalker. Which, which everyone wanted, but we, we all got wanted it anyway. But he's yeah, exactly. Like he's it's not like he's you're not gonna bring out a new Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker. Exactly. So I mean it you know, it wasn't doomed to fail. There was a lot of interest, but I think, you know, if you remember, they didn't even have full renders. Like they had no models, they just came to you with like basic renders. Yeah. And like three quarters through the campaign, then you got the actual prototype. It, and it was like that they, wasn't enough. They launched the campaign about three weeks too early because mm-hmm. I think if they'd have launched it with the actual color render or even a prototype, it yeah. would I think it would have funded. But I mean, that's... So I was talking to my friend. It's like you, your whole division, right? You're, you're built around, um, well, now they're built around the success of Haslabs since mm. the first couple Haslabs, like they realized that that's where the big money is. So you're built around this and you all know you take turns. Like they're wise enough now, if you've noticed, they don't have has labs crossing over each other and overlapping like they did. That, that was one, so stupid. Oh, dude, that one um, fall was like Transformers, Ghostbusters, and Star Wars going well, you, all at you the had, same time. Yeah, because you had what? There's um, summer, shit, fall, and fall. So you had the yeah. what is it the the ghost you had giant man and oh, you no, had, no. i'm um, talking about the first one i'm talking about oh. the proton pack the rancor and you had transformers which was like oh, okay i was just looking at what was being funded so you have um the plasma ha- plasma series has lab two in the box giant yeah. man and the ghost all shipping in fall of 2024 so i assume they were all going on at around the same time Exactly. So, I mean, you can't do that. We only have a finite amount of resources mm-hmm. as a collector. So I think they've realized that. But also, I'm like I, I was saying, like, I mean, obviously, I would like some big projects, like if they came, if they made sense. But I think the concept of like, a like a seasonal quarterly has lab, I think it's almost dead. Because I think you've kind of tapped the well other than GI Joe. I think you've really tapped the Marvel well, unless you're going to get bold, unless you're going to have the balls to give us a fantastic car, a Quinjet, and, you know, obviously a Blackbird, which would be the number one, unless you're going to find a way to do that, which makes sense and is somewhat affordable, you're running out of things to do. Like I heard Fin fin Fang Foom. I would like a Fin Fang Foom. Mm -hmm. It depends on what it would cost. If it was like 175, Okay, sure. If it was crazy big, but if it's going to be like three fifty, no, count me out. You know what I mean? I'd much rather see the Sentinel re-released and you know updated, which is what I think they're going to do. I yeah, honestly I, think I wouldn't. Do I that. wouldn't even be surprised if they downscaled the mold and what, released slightly? It slightly. Yeah, so then you could have like a master mold size Sentinel and have a couple of smaller ones because. That Sentinel, I think, in the cartoon or in the show, cartoon show, whatever, it wasn't that big. Like that, the Sentinel they gave us is fantastic and massive. But it, I think, in the show, it was almost um, half the size. No, I think if they do it again, they're they're going to use the mold they got. I I I fully I fully expect them to do that. I would. I'm just saying, my preference would be a slightly smaller one. I'm also curious to see if it would be. Oh, I guess it is pinless, isn't it? Like well, the pin, the the joints you can true. see are actually yeah. de- are actually um, deliberately there because that's part of the design. Yeah, it's part of the design. It's a robot, right? So, like you would see the screws in the robot. You don't wouldn't need yeah. to have it. But I think yeah. Bas- it was Bastion pinless. I can't. Remember. It wouldn't matter. I don't think they would re-release Bastion, only because. They can their whole, yeah, their whole rule, which would make everyone's heads explode, is if they re-released the um the exclusive figures for each of the Haslabs. Like they they can't do that, 
I guess they could get away with doing like an updated 97 Bastion. Then mm. they might do that, but I would expect them to give us something different. Like something I, I expect they're going to give us that Bastion in um, Wave 3. Wave 3, yeah. Yeah, I, I think the same thing. But like I said, the HasLab variant, it was too like, I don't know, it didn't make sense. Uh, it's not like they didn't know that that thing was going up. It went up, it was probably to try to see, okay, is there interest? And mm-hmm. people bit immediately, but they're going to find out they bit because it, one, it might be the Sentinel Two, It was a dollar to back it. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, I, if I would have seen it, I would have backed it for a dollar. Of course. I would right? have backed it's it a dollar. History has lab. Yeah, exactly. And they refunded it, which I thought was hilarious. Yeah. Like what was the point of refunding a dollar? But so like, the, I mean, the, the thing is I, if they, if they didn't refund it, people are like, well, I paid a dollar for this. Where's my, where's my sure. thing so it probably cost them a ton of money to re to process the fees coming in and then to refund everyone's dollar that's true all i know is the next haslab up is gi joe yeah. and then after that is ghostbusters which that one's I, got me i assume ghostbusters would be another um cosplay type thing nope that's what really? I thought. No, they're going to do a six inch scale Ecto one, like completely Ooh. tricked out. So, yeah, exactly. Now, can you imagine if you get like a perfectly scaled Ecto one lights and sounds and it has the like rear, rear, like everyone's going to buy that. Oh, 100%. And I think the, the ironic thing is, is that they did or they tried to do an engine of vengeance before they did Ecto one. Well, I mean, uh, Ecto one is i would say the most um known car in in, yeah um, other than the batmobile right i you know what i would actually argue ecto one is more known than the batmobile and no no so the reason i say this bear with me as i as i as i do isn't that the batmobile isn't well known Mm -hmm. is that there's too many different versions of the batmobile for people to instantly pick it out Whereas right. Ecto, Ecto one, all you got to do is hear, hear the siren, or you see a picture of it. It, it right. isn't. It isn't that it's um, more well known. I would say if you put the um, the Batman eighty nine Batmobile out, people would recognize that's the Batmobile, or even Batman sixty six. But you show someone the Batmobile from the Batman or the Tumblr, right? Like you're like, yeah. what? where do I know that from? Whereas Ecto one without question is going to be um they'll know what that is right no that's definitely a fair point but like i mean so if it's ecto one uh, i'm in for that especially six six inch scale like tricked Mm -hmm. out at worst it would be like two something and as long as it's like completely accurate and like heavy and all up fine i can justify it the next thing, supposedly, which is going to kill me, I'm hoping it's not, is going to be the Cobra um, Rattler section scale for the um, classified, which is one of my favorite. That would 100% oh. kill. Dude, that and the Cobra Night Raven are like the two things I don't want them to release this year. Like, I want a break. But if they do, that, we'll, we'll see. But um, then you got Todd releasing Batmobiles left and right. Like he just released the Tumblr. He just released it in uh, Camel. He just released the 89 again. He's re I mean, he's going to drop the Batman Forever Batmobile. Like he's just dropping Batmobiles. And it's like, come on. So God. You get a Batmobile. You get a Batmobile. Yeah. But like for some reason, I know they're more plasticky. I'll defend that. I... But at the same time. That doesn't bother me. Given the price that he's releasing no. it at, it doesn't bother me that they're plasticky. I think it makes complete exactly. sense. Yeah, it's a fucking toy. Like, yeah. I mean, we're collecting. Do you want the Batmobile or do you not? Like, if you want a hot toy, go buy the hot toy. It's seven fifty, which is just insane. But like, Todd's releasing it under a hundred bucks, which is nuts. And most of the time, he's giving you a figure. Like the Tumblr, it's huge. And he put um, Lucius Fox with it for like 89 bucks. So like what is Hasbro's excuse mm-hmm. that you can't release a Ghost Rider 
with a bike for under 60 what's your excuse yeah like i don't know if it's because they like todd is um i'm wondering if because the dc license is cheaper that there is i don't think so I, I definitely don't think so. I, I knew that was going to be your argument, but I don't well, that, and that's the only thing I can log unless it's just a, a simple money grub, which is fine. I'm not fine, but which I understand if that if that's what it is. But that's what I think it is. Like because Todd, Todd's basically doing a new mold for almost every figure, and I'm sure he's reusing bits and pieces exactly. where he can. But well, yeah, that's you know, the whole thing. Like people are starting to notice that he, oh, you're repainting this buck. Yeah, but I gave you 200 figures that yeah. were completely unique sculpting. I mean, yeah, like, great. of course, of course, he's going to reuse stuff. Like, I don't pe- reusing stuff is absolutely fine. Like, that's kind of for me, that's where half the fun of toys come in. Like, I, agree. I, I remember when you when I was um, collecting toys or not collecting, but playing with toys when, it, when I was a kid, I'm like, oh, look, this Wolverine's got this the same body as that Wolverine apart from the belt. Like yep. you were, you would notice that stuff, and it was fine. Like it, that n- has never and will never bother me. No, I mean, it also let's just think about this. At the end of the day, everything superhero wise, like some form or some way, is derivative from Superman. Exactly. Somehow. And so he, so he that's something reused. that I've, I've, I have no, uh, no concept on this because I've never had one. But I'm assuming that even hot toys use reuse to a, to a certain extent. Oh, like, absolutely. Right, like the yeah. exoskeleton, the arms may be yeah. colored differently, but yeah, reuse is part of the thing. If you can, if you re, if reuse helps you keep the cost down, then why why would you not? Right, it's smart money. You know what I mean? Like to me, there's a difference between reuse and re-release. And yeah. re-release is more egregious than reuse. Exactly. Because reuse gets you something different. Yeah. Whether it's completely or close to different, it's still different. Re-release. I see, I don't I up, don't I know, don't dropping. mind re-release because if like for there are some people that maybe didn't get uh, please don't right. that. there are some I people that maybe that. did get like a, a certain Spider Man or a certain Batman. Right. So or Batmobile. Or a Batmobile, so you're going to re-release it, even if it's slightly different, so that there are going to be people like you and me, who are like, well, I need every Spider-Man, that we're going to buy it again, but you don't have to, because the only new thing in it is going to be a couple of accessories, or that maybe there's going to be a um, a new card back, and that's yeah. fine, like, that's on us if we want to buy it, but it's mm-hmm. also for people who didn't get it in the first place, like, that's the whole point of what that is. Right. If you want to be a crazy psycho completist, that's on you. Mm -hmm. And I completely agree with that. Like the whole thing is, you know, if you honestly got DC collectibles Batmobile, you can skip this one. It's a hundred percent identical. It's the same thing, just a different box. I unfortunately stupidly sold mine two years ago. And so this was the perfect moment to get it back without going on eBay and trying to pay. And paying it exactly yeah. so i'm happy and i mean and the thing is is that if you're i think this is actually might be the crux of our discussion today is to reuse if you're doing like if, if todd's like hey i can i can re-release this and make some money yep or hang on a second <coughs> god my headset fell off as i coughed um either i can re-release re-release this and make some money or i can just mm-hmm. let the original ones go for crazy numbers on ebay right like exactly. what really what are you going to do like you're going to you're going to re-release it so you can make a bit more money the people that really want it or want to buy it back again like yourself aren't then going to go and yeah throw a ton of money at the scalpers well i mean think about it this way too theoretically the idea the idea when you do these things comic books mediums toys cartoons movies is there's a new consumer born every day. Yeah. It's new to somebody who hasn't seen it a hundred times before. So like you're capitalizing on that. But also I think Todd gets, this is one thing I'll give him so much respect for. Certain characters in these IPs and like these huge, you know, like libraries have to be evergreen. They have mm-hmm. to be readily available for the, the new person who just jumps on the boat at all times. 
like the Ninja Turtles. You always should have the turtles available. They should never be, you know, in a series where you can't get them at all. They're sold out or discontinued because what is the point of building a Ninja Turtles collection for somebody if you can't get the Ninja Turtles? So like those guys should always be in production, always be in cycle. And I think Todd gets that. Whereas like, you know, the supporting characters and the villains and the special guys and the Easter eggs, like that doesn't have to always be available because it's depending on what you can make out of that. Yeah. Like Marvel does it with Spider-Man, Wolverine, Captain America, Iron Man. And um, I think those are the main ones. Those are the ones you've constantly seen in a wave somehow. And it makes sense because those are the recognizable faces that are going to bring people in to buy this. My question is, is I think we're getting into an area where, and this is funny, where these companies are dueling and it's like WWE and WCW, like they're playing chicken with each other and just throwing shit and see if it sticks because Todd shouldn't be charging 75 for a Batmobile, but 20 to, I mean, but five bucks less for, for a freaking um, two pack. Like it's just strange. Mm-hmm. And Marvel shouldn't be charging close to what 30, 35 a regular release. Yeah, basically. Todd McFarlane can give you a bigger figure. And I mean, he doesn't like to do accessories, but like when he does, a bigger figure mm-hmm. for $10 less. And his he- wired capes are amazing. Like I just got the Detective 27. Dude, unbelievable figure. So good. It, uh, I don't have many. I don't think I have any Todd figures, but I have. No, that's not true. I have the one of the uh, Geralt from The Witcher, and the right. uh, the upper body is basically just an overlay and nothing else. Yeah, he's big with overlays. I which makes sense to me, but like I feel like that's also got to help cut his costs costs down. Which again, I'm right. all for if you if that's what you if that's how you can do it, because it, it he's oddly more more articulated than I first thought when looking at him. Yeah, I mean, everyone who craps on McFarlane for the articulation and, like, you know, the movability, other than his old stuff, his new stuff is pretty decent. I mean, is it a freaking, um, you know, SH Figure Arts? No. No, it's not of course designed not. to be, but it's definitely not 5 POA or a 7 POA. You know what I mean? I, like, some, of his, some of his old 5, 7 POAs were, weren't even as good as the stuff from the like the toy biz 90s era because they were just right. so statuesque like yes it had a cut or it could move the arm but it made no sense other than in the pose that mcfarlane gave you like he's yeah, come a he's hell of a long way exactly. and he's kept his costs down insanely well exactly and um i don't know if we talked about this but this can be what we ended on since we've been mm. todd heavy you know todd has um a marvel license now i did know that yeah yeah i'm really now, curious what he like if he does um a series of marvel figures in the same scale as the the batman stuff mm-hmm. that he's got that's what i think is ultimately going to happen so like he's starting with like 10 to 12 inch like mini like semi-pose statues that gets him in the door yeah. i think the caveat is and it's genius too is it's all his artwork. Mm-hmm. So it's all the characters he worked on in these books, variously, his interpretation. So like, that's how he gets away with his Wolverine yeah. and Brown because it was his artwork and it's just a specific moment. But they did say that the license carries forward. He does have seven inch figures coming. He's got like three waves. I, I already know what they are. I've been basically sworn to secrecy. I know what they are. The thing is, my buddy's like, dude, I hate McFarlane. He's going to ruin Marvel. I'm like, can you imagine getting a Todd McFarlane looking Todd McFarlane Spider-Man finally Mm -hmm. from Todd McFarlane? Like, that's my dream. I don't care if it, you know, can freaking do full splits or whatever. I just want that look. Like, I'll take that all day. What did I say on um, our wish list from Marvel? A Todd McFarlane Spider-Man. Yeah. So, like, He's going to do some of this stuff, but I, I honestly think Todd is trying to own the kingdom. I think he wants to have complete ownership of everything. And I think he's slowly going to work his way 
Oh, I, I just I'm see sure. it happening like, so easy. If you if you don't have, I, I would be surprised if you don't see Todd have some some kind of Marvel regular yeah. figure license at some point. And the thing I mean, is, is that you have Marvel Select. I think he's going to bump them out. That's what which I think. I think, I think I don't think he's going to ha- impact Legends at all. I think if anything, no. he's going to be mar- like clear out Marvel Select because I think there's a lot of people who buy the Marvel Select stuff who don't actually collect Select, but are right. using it as like a Legends fill in. Like I have, um, I actually at one point bought a Marvel Select Amazing Spider Man and then decided, nah, I don't need this. He's a bit out of scale for the right, other right. stuff that I have, so I got rid of him. But my Marvel Select Apocalypse. Perfect. No, he's, I couldn't get, I didn't want to get the purple retro card at Apocalypse because he didn't quite fit what I wanted that right. character to look like on my shelf. But the uh, the Marvel Select, the right colors. Yep. Right? Nice like the right scale, too. Like well, and scale. That's the thing. Like, Apocalypse is out of scale. As long as he's bigger than the rest, I didn't care what scale he was. Like, he just has to be a big figure. Same as, like, Marvel Select Juggernaut. He can be big. Yep. Um, the Hulk Buster can be big. Hulk doesn't. Hulk, right? Hulk like, can be big. Crimson Dynamo. Um, Exactly. Assist, though, like those type of characters you can get away with in your Marvel Legends. Exactly. And even and better, the, actually. I would I would agree. I was gonna say yeah. the, I would agree that it's actually better for them to be a bigger uh a bigger figure than than what we're otherwise seeing. Yeah, I mean well, I mean, especially Apocalypse, I think that was the one they struck gold with. Yeah. Because Marvel Legends can't touch that apocalypse. No, they all. can't. It's just and, so like, good. Is he is he as articulate as some of the uh, as some of the legends? Absolutely no. not. Of course not. Like there's no you can't even pretend that he is. No. But it's Apocalypse and not Spider Man. Like Apocalypse exactly. doesn't do the splits. Exactly. It's, it would be like comparing a um one of the Motu, you know, the the classic retro figures. I can't remember the actual name of them, but you know the ones I mean. Yeah, um, no, I know exactly what you mean. Like it is comparing one of those to one of the Masterverse ones. Well, of course, the Masterverse have a bit more articulation, but that's the point. Like the the, the other ones that you get are deliberately meant to be a reimagining right. of the classic toys. So they have a modern take on some of the stuff, but for the most part, their articulation is limited because there wasn't any uh, ab crunch in in those, and they have like a single right. jointed elbow and. That's totally fine because that's what you expect. Master of Us have a bit more again because that's what you would expect in a more modern, a more modern take. Yeah, they get the best of both worlds. Like they were yeah. smart to do the Master Verse line because it gives people who miss Maddie Collector and really want that line back mm-hmm. something to bite onto. I mean, is it as good? Some figures are. Some figures, I'm like, oh, dude, this smokes Maddie Collector. And yeah. Then there are some where I'm like, eh. Maddie Collector did it a little bit better. Exactly. But the thing was, Maddie Collector didn't uh, like. I like Masterverse because, yeah, obviously it has reuse. It's He Man. Every freaking character in Eternia like, is a naked guy with armor on, like, and you know, a, a loincloth. Yeah. But like, like you, you could like as yeah, bear. Masterverse reuse again, like He Man reuse, mm-hmm. is part of the charm. For me, like oh. I love seeing how much of this figure is the same as this one. Okay, so yeah, the the forearms and and loincloth is a bit different. I bet everything else underneath that is exactly the same. Right, the buck is usually going to be the same, but like yeah. I give Masterverse credit where they have multiple style bucks. Yep. Like the one and, thing Masterverse does so much better is like Prince Adam, right? Yeah. Prince Adam would still be He-Man size, but dressed as Prince Adam in in Maddie Collector, like it would just be a deco change. Mm-hmm. Where Masterverse gives you either a very skinny Adam or like it, it's it's variable, it's different. It's not, you know, oh, it's He-Man with a purple coat on. So I, I like that. I mean, like I said, some of the sculpting is better with Maddie Collector because it was four horsemen, but they all were exactly the same buck like every figure was on the same stock he-man buck unless mm-hmm. it was like a crazy deluxe like 
you know, Megator or something like that. Other yeah. than that, every figure, every single figure. So like I give Masterverse credit and the price point. Like they kill it with the price point, like McFarlane. And we, you know, for some weird reason, I, I've noticed that Masterverse has definitely dipped off in like, like just people wanting it. Yeah. It does, no, it, I have. It doesn't seem to be as uh, as no. sold so. Same with Origins. Like all of it. Even like I just got the uh, Turtles of Grey Skull Mikey because I need to complete the brothers. Like, those are great, but like they're not crazy sought after like people aren't clamoring for it there's a couple things the only thing that seems to sell for masters right now is anything that's filmation inspired yeah that's it that seems to be the only thing you know and then for you it would be um new adventures of he-man inspired yeah exactly yeah like i'm not i don't feel the need to get every single masterverse figure that comes out there yeah. are some I'm like, oh, that'd be cool, or oh, I like that part, but exactly. for the most part, I'm like, eh, I don't, I don't need, I don't need to get um, Sun Man. He yeah. has no bearing on my enjoyment of uh, of Masters of the Universe in any way, shape, or form. Now, will I get um, one of the other new adventures figures when they come out? Probably, more than likely. You will. You will. Absolutely, I will. But like I don't need to get um, Hero, or I don't need to get no. uh, Jitsu, yeah. right? Like there's there's some that I just don't right. need. Agreed. And like again, the library is so vast. It's not yeah. as vast as Marvel, but it's pretty vast. It's a couple hundred characters that are main, that are known. So like, if Masterverse was to do all of it, they still got years and years and years to go. Which 100%. I don't think they're gonna make it. I I, think, I don't think no, they're not gonna get everyone out. No, I I would say that this would probably whatever the contract is for Masterverse currently, and Masters with Mattel, I would say that this is probably its last run. I just can't see them pulling anything crazy like Rabbit out of a hat. They already gave you Eternia. Mm-hmm. They've already given you every dream project, pretty much every dream figure. So, like, I think they'll give you probably, like, two or three more waves of the filmation, and that might be, like, the wind down. Unless they pull something nuts out at San Diego Comic-Con that I'm not expecting. I, I can't see it because it's just the need isn't there. There's not enough um, media to promote He-Man currently. Like, you had the Kevin Smith show, but now it's gone, and it's probably gone for, what, two years? So couple like that's of years, all, yeah. Yeah, there's no movie in circulation. You got comic books, but these all got comic books now. Like everything's I, got a comic. I book. hate I hate to say it, but comic books are um not the promotion that people think no. they are. No, they don't move the needle anymore like the way that they used to. No. You know. So, but uh no, I figured that would be a fun topic because yeah. like I was blown away by McFarlane giving me a $75 Batmobile. That's like, it's like, absolutely no. insane. Yeah. Like I'm super happy. I keep waiting for them to be like, oh, the price was wrong. Nope. 75. And he nope, came that, out. He, that, he that's like, actually what it is. So I'm like, dude, I'm I'm sold. And you know, happy as freaking hell. Um, I can't believe San Diego Comic Con is next month. Like it's actually in like three weeks. It's crazy that it is that close. Yeah, so like I've already decided, you know, I've been tighter with my wallet before things. Now I'm just like, listen, unless it's like blow away, I I just can't dump on it. I mm-hmm. I can't. There's too much crap. Like the never ending barrage has to stop. These companies got to get together and be like, okay, we'll take how, turns. How, yeah, let, let, let's not um, drown everyone's money immediately. Yeah. Exactly, because it just it, it doesn't work. It's not a viable business model. Like we don't have the funds to sustain. Mm. You know what I mean? Yep. So, but that is basically what I have, and I figured it would be fun. So I hope you enjoy. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I I mean I I have nothing nothing else beyond um, what we've gone through. No no real final thoughts. Um, Same. Yeah. 
Yeah, that, that was that was pretty much it. Folks, if you if you stayed with us this long, Jesus Christ, it is now. If you stayed with us for the uh, for the last hour or so, uh, we appreciate you. Um, you know where to find us. If you don't, well, if you can't listen, then you have to get this message anyway. So, yeah, there's. Uh, I guess that's the end. Of it. Hey, thanks for watching the previous video from Graphic Policy Television. Just by watching, you help support our site. Thank you so much. Now, if you're watching these videos, you probably care about geeky things like movies, television, comic books, toys, games, video games, you name it. You can go and subscribe right now to our YouTube channel to stay in touch and catch all the new videos, or check out our website at graphicpolicy.com. There's a nice link on this end of the video. But as always, thank you for watching. Keep on rocking and keep it geeky.